good. Oh, you right out of your way. See a little video? Yeah, just making a video. Right now. How you doing? Yeah, it was closed for a while. I just found it open. But there's no real signs that say it's illegal, so you can just play stupid like it says no camping and yeah. no fires, but it doesn't say anything about it. Uh, yeah, no, a I just came down here just to shoot a video. I'll be going. That's cool, man. All right, man. Have fun. Yeah, right on. Good to see you. All right, so how's it going? On this YouTube channel, I like to talk about backpacking gear and outdoor gear that's more or less like the best of the internet, the best of the web and also budget gear. So this motorcycle that I'm sitting on, I just purchased it recently. It is the Himalayan Scram 411, and it's a budget motorcycle that's considered the best of the internet. Uh, as far as price, what I paid was 3,000 bucks and then 100 bucks a month, um, and so it was pretty easy. Uh, I had a motorcycle already. I have, this is actually my fourth uh, vehicle that I've had since, tw since 2020, since the start of the pandemic. I, ha I was camping in a Prius, I was using a Prius as a camper car and the Prius got totaled. I then started camping in a Sienna. I was camping in a Sienna camper van and the Sienna got totaled. I also had an ultra lightweight motorcycle called the California Scooter Company or CSC San Gabriel Cafe Racer, which is an ultra lightweight motorcycle. It only weighs 270 pounds and it can go on the back of that uh, Sienna camper car. Interestingly, that motorcycle is also totaled. <laughs> And this is my fourth vehicle since the start of the pandemic. Um, now, as far as like the San Gabriel Cafe Racer versus the Scram, I would just say that, you know, they're completely different. They're both the best of the internet and they're both budget motorcycles that you can get easy. Um, and I really enjoyed both. I've got, I have a positive review about both and you know, there's, all right. So the big difference between the San Gabriel Cafe Racer and the Himalayan Scram is that they're completely different in geometry. One is a minimalist bike and the other one is a maximalist, maximalist bike. So the Himalayan Scram, this is a maximalist geometry 400cc bike. It looks more like a 500 or a 700cc bike and it's designed to go on dirt from Cat from New Delhi all the way up the Himalayas to Kathmandu. Uh, this bike is manufactured in India and it's intended for the Himalayas. It is an adventure bike. Um, the original version of this bike, the Himalayan, uh, has a more uncomfortable seat. It's got a windscreen. It's like 500 bucks more. It's got some roll bars right here. So this is the Himalayan 2.0. It's actually the same bike, just cooler looking without the windscreen with a bigger tire on the front. And it's got a memory foam or a comfortable seat. And that's basically the only difference. It's basically exactly the same adventure bike as the Himalayan. Uh, I would say that this maximalist geometry on the Himalayan Scram is extremely easy to ride. It's super comfortable. The saddle, the saddle style seat, it, push, it puts your seat right directly center on the bike. So you don't really have the option of sliding forward and backwards. So it kind of puts you in this certain geometry where the, the front wheel and the back wheel are equal distances from your seat while you're riding the bike. And it puts you in this very squared, very ge like geometrically symmetrical stance on the bike that's super easy to ride. You're up super high so you can see above all the cars around you super easily. Um, and it's got a very rubbery, soft, bouncy feel, and the engine doesn't make a growling noise. It makes like a purr. It makes a very soft purr noise. And so the bike is overall like a no-brainer. It's just super easy to use. Um, you can see where I am. I'm in the woods, and uh, the, this drive out here put no wear and tear on the bike at all. It's just really easy to ride. Now, with, that Sam with the San Gabriel Cafe Racer from CSC, I put 4,000 miles on that bike. So I'm pretty familiar with it. I would say it's completely the opposite of this bike. They're both best of the internet budget bikes and they're both awesome, but they're very different. That San Gabriel Cafe Racer is only 270 pounds and it can easily go in the back of your car. But at the same time, that lightweight geometry, that minimalist geometry of the bike causes the bike to fishtail in the wind. So when you're in, in, in adventure situations where the wind is blowing really hard and you're going fast on the freeway, uh, cause my bike would go 80. You know, I had my bike rigged with a 14 tooth, tooth sprocket so that it could go anywhere from 45 miles an hour all the way up to 80 miles an hour. But in a heavy wind, uh, that San Gabriel Cafe Racer would slow down all the way to 35 miles an hour and I would have to get off the freeway as soon as possible because it's kind of dangerous. With this one, with the Himalayan, it's designed to go 60 miles an hour straight uphill, even in snow or a blizzard or heavy winds or whatever in the Himalayas. So, you know, when I'm north of the Golden Gate Bridge, we've got this one section of Highway 101, it's called the Robin Williams Tunnel. 
it's super difficult to drive in a motorcycle. They're, the winds are heavy. There's zero visibility, tons of fog, and, uh, and my goggles get covered up with rain. And uh, the Himalayan can handle it. I can go 60 miles an hour and just press right through all that wind and get through it. Um, I'm getting home from, normally my commute would be about 45 minutes. And with the Himalayan, it's cutting my commute in half. I'm able to get home in like 20 minutes. Because the bike is just strong. It can handle, it has the torque necessary to handle those adventure situations. With that little uh, San Gabriel Cafe Racer, basically it's a go-kart that you can take on the freeway. If you've ever been to the go-karts and you wish that you could drive that go-kart straight on, onto the highway and ride it home, that's what the San Gabriel Cafe Racer is. It's, it's basically a go-kart with two wheels and mine would, could go 80 miles an hour. If I was going downhill on a sunny day with no wind on the freeway, it could get up to 80. Now, what happened to that bike though was that now what happened with that bike though is that when my Sienna got totaled, um, I think somebody wanted the computer chip that was inside of the Sienna because there's a shortage on Sienna on on computer bleh, because there's a shortage on computer chips. So some of the gunk in my oil pan got up into the engine. The engine seized and started knocking, and the the Sienna was totaled, and I had to donate it to Cars for Kids. I didn't even make us an insurance claim on that on the van at all. And at that point, I only had that San Gabriel Cafe Racer to ride and. The back wheel on the San Gabriel Cafe Racer is a front wheel. So on that little motorcycle, the front and back wheel are both front wheels. And the back wheel, having a front wheel on the back wheel, it couldn't handle the wear and tear that I was putting on it, commuting with it to work. The rubber started flying off the back wheel super quick. And basically the tire popped before I could replace the back tire. So I went to a mechanic and purchased a tire for the back tire. I got the... Um, the Stanko flat track tire, but it took about three and a half weeks for that tire to show up in the mail. And during that time, the tire popped. And so I parked the bike with a pop tire on the side of the road and it was okay for about two days. But on the third day, somebody came and drove their car on top of the motorcycle trying to break the handlebar lock and they totaled the bike. The insurance company paid the lien to CSC and they gave me like 800 bucks, okay? And that's, that's basically how the bike got totaled, right? So at that point I needed to buy another bike and this was really like the best of the internet uh, bikes that were available to me. Now, the big issue that I ran into with the SU250 is that there's no, there really isn't a mechanic um, where I live that will work on the SC, that will work on the San Gabriel Cafe Racer. Uh, the CSC dealership is in LA and if you buy a CSC bike, it makes more sense to, be, to buy one if you live in LA because you're gonna need to be able to get that bike worked on. So for me, the only mechanic who will work on that bike is down in uh, down near San Francisco State University, which is like an hour and a half away from where I live. Um, there really isn't a mechanic anywhere near me who will work on it. Now with Royal Enfield, there's a dealership in San Francisco who will work on this motorcycle. And I would recommend finding out if there's a mechanic where you live who will work on this bike before you buy it. So if you're going to buy a Royal Enfield or a CSC, one of these best of the internet budget bikes, you're going to want to find out if uh, there's a mechanic who will work on it maybe even before you buy the bike. It, it was gonna cost me $1,000 to tow that CSC SG250 to the mechanic because it would have cost 500 bucks to tow, it, to tow the bike from the impound to my house. Cause it was, it was a, a, bleh, a bike thief ran over the bike and the bike was totaled. So the bike was towed to the impound. It cost me 500 bucks to tow the bike from the impound to my house. It was gonna cost another 500 to tow it to the mechanic. So that's 1,000 for the tow. And then the labor was gonna be a thousand, so that's two. And the parts were gonna be a thousand, so that's 3,000 bucks. I paid 3,000 bucks for a brand new bike. So I got a brand new bike for the same price it would have cost me to, to fix the old one, you know? So it worked out. As far as price-wise, there's no way I could have saved any money. I, I spent the same amount of money for a brand new bike. The only thing that I could have done cheaper was is ride the bus. If I had realized that that rear tire was gonna pop and uh, I started riding the bus instead of the bike, and waited for that Stanko flat track tire to show up in the mail and then and then just took the tire to the mechanic and had the wheel put on you know that would have only cost me 500 bucks and i would still be riding that sg250 now uh but the way it worked out the bike got totaled and i had to replace it so so i've got this himalayan now and it's pretty good